And Rich Trapper tapping in. TNN Trap News Network. You feel me? Rich Trapper. The homie wanted you to uh, whitelist this shit too. Ooh. Rich Trapper. Rich Trapper. He be reacting to your shit. Alright y'all man, we back here. Yeah, y'all know we still using that same template, but don't worry about it, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, man. Y'all sent me the timestamps. Y'all said it's Flockiana 600. Y'all started off by telling me Flocko starting off by talking bad about LA, calling them broke. We finna jump into this content. I don't want no further ado. Don't man. Three, two, one, let's go. Sure. Of course. But from my culture, we're not really cigar guys. You know what I'm saying? Now, now when like you say culture, right? It's obviously like it's black culture, because I don't think you are talking about like the street culture of LA, right? Because I don't think like half these niggas can't really afford a cigar. So I was talking about culture. Yeah, I'm talking about the gang culture, LA. Ah, true. Okay. You know, gang culture, LA. You know, smoke weed. You know, blunt stuff like that. Yeah. This like next level, like. And then Flacco immediately goes with, yeah, because you know these ninjas can't afford blah, blah, blah. Like, bro, this is what I mean when I say Flacco has so much to say negatively about the culture of Los Angeles. That's the culture that's literally providing a, a, a lifestyle for him as far as finances. Boss. You know what mm. I mean? Having money. Type like, of thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Suge was like the last person I saw like really like, right, like have that, like, 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 like kind of have like the mob look, you know? Yeah, like as far as the as far as the culture with the cigar, it's yeah. very very big worldwide in the city. But just the culture that we're used to, and huh. we you know gravitate to, and they gravitate to us, it's not like a thing, man. Mm -hmm. You see, man. Now the purpose of this interview, man, was I want for this to be like the life story of Christopher Lovejoy, meaning this right, like in in like a hundred years. You feel me, right? Yeah. Yeah. When we all go, nobody's gonna care in a hundred years about the story of Christopher Lovejoy. So on. They can come back and re and say, okay, this is the blueprint for us to find out exactly who this man is. Yeah. How like how he done terrorize. <laughs> terrorize who? I kept that nigga in the house for two weeks. What are you talking about? Terrorize what? And then the cold part about it is, Flacco, this is after you knew for a fact that I had that man in the house. You're interviewing him after I already put him on bunk status. What are you talking about, Flacco? You're just eating meat for the sake of eating meat, bro. Rise the city. You feel me? Right? Like, right? Um, and how he made his wealth, right, 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 right. So this is gonna be the life story of you, man. You feel me? Yeah, man. So my first question is a question that I was told to never ask anybody <laughs> from LA. Yeah, what's that question, bro? Never say this. Now I'm only saying this because again, you know, six hundred is my friend. Where are you from? That's like born, very big. raised. He's from LA. He is civilian, just like us here at TNN Trap News Network. Squares a box of Apple Jacks twice as green, big dog. Okay. I'm from Los Angeles, California. Uh, okay. South Central Los Angeles to be exact. Facts. The west side of South Central <laughs> to be more exact. Uh, facts. The Crenshaw <laughs> District to be a little more exact. Facts. Yeah, see, this is where the lies start coming in, big dog, because we were sliding around the Crenshaw District. We were sliding around Los Angeles, California. You weren't there, big dog. You were nowhere near around. You wouldn't show up. You was afraid to go over there, big dog. So let's not, let's not do that because that's a blatant lie. Facts, facts, facts. Rolling sixties to be even more, more exact. <laughs> okay, facts, so facts. Now facts. you're just full blown lying because we was just at Hungry Harold's doing an interview and you just wasn't there. We was just on Tenth Avenue. So you wasn't there. We was just in the photos. You wasn't there. We was just on the high park at High Park at the High Park at the Donut Shop. You wasn't. And then the dudes that was around there that like seen us and was coming around saying what's up and all that made it clear that you don't be there. And then the little Asian lady that be at the donut shop, she said she ain't seen you in like six, four, three or four months. So like, you don't, let's not do that. You feel me? Let's not do that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that right there, you know, it's, it's a big question. Mm -hmm. But that's where I'm from, born and raised. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've really been over there all my life. You know what I'm saying? I didn't do no stints in the pen. I ain't move away, you know what I'm saying, for whatever reasons. And nothing against nobody who went yeah. to the pen, and nothing against somebody who moved away. But I just been there my whole life. You know, what I'm saying? all yeah. my zip codes and schools, houses, homes. Been you don't live over there right now, bro. You moved away. Your zip code isn't that area right now. What are you talking about, bro? You be in the valley. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You feel me? In the '60s, you know huh. what I'm saying. That's my neighborhood. So I've been over. I've seen people come and go. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. and it's uh. It's kind of like, like I said, the movies, man, like like the, like the movie Boys in the Hood, man. That's kind of how I grew up, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They filmed that stuff in my neighborhood, you know what I mean? Oh, wow. First okay. high school, you know? Bro, you wasn't Ricky? You wasn't Doughboy? You wasn't Trey? 
What are you talking about? What your life was nothing like boys in the hood, bro. Your life was clueless. You just happened to go over there. Your life was clueless, big dog. Tubular. Radical. You feel me? What? This nigga's wild. So it was a Holly gang activity. You know what I'm saying? That's where they filmed all the movies at, man. That culture was just so contagious. You know what I mean? It just traveled all around the world. You know what I'm saying? This is why you... It wasn't too contagious because you never caught the code of the cripping. If, if gang banging and cripping was a, was, a, was, a, was a code that was contagious to the entire neighborhood, you was immune, big dog. You was immune. It wasn't that contagious because you didn't catch it, big dog. You're not a factor like that. Let's chill out. You're a good person as a civilian, as a human being. You're probably a great dad. We love that for you. Um... Probably an intimidating looking bodyguard where it was looking because we know that you're a buster. But actual one two step like Sierra? Oh no, big dog. You will do no one two step like Sierra. That's what we don't. That's what we know you don't do. A certain, I'm gonna say, uh, communities from my neighborhood all over the world now. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's just, you know what I'm saying? Saying nothing new, but that's just, that's where I'm from. Of course. You know what I mean? It's not too many people, you know what I'm saying, who can articulate things and be successful in life. Based on, you know what I'm saying, where we're from and how we grew up with all the obstacles. It's like impossible. You know what right. I'm saying? Like it's just it's just impossible. So I'm very, very blessed to be here and really? be able to travel the world, you know what I mean? And um, be here with you, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I done seen it all and done it all, man. Man, bro, facts, man. Now like with your parents um in the streets, college graduates, like what type of like I guess household did you grow up in? Well, my mom was trying to be like a little LVN nurse type thing, you know mm, what I'm saying? So facts. she was pretty much cool, you know what I'm saying? I pretty like, you know, was living up under her for, I'm saying, for, you know, when she was here, you know what I'm saying? Then my pops, you know what I'm saying? He was in, he was in jail from 75 to 85. I was born in 83, you know what I'm saying? They was married, so they had the kind of visit thing. That's how I was born. So I didn't okay. see my, I didn't see my father until he got out of jail in 85, you know okay. what I'm saying? I was two years old. So, you know, uh, my dad was on, he'd have been in pen and back and forth for the pen doing his thing, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, even when he got out, he went that this the most sense. At one point, we was on the streets, and my mom said, "Yeah, he been in jail more than more than he been on the streets." You know what oh, what? Wow. But you know, uh, you know, he was just in the street life. You know what I'm saying? My mom was trying to hold it down. You know what I'm saying? Single household, single mother, four bad boys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the uh, uh, <laughs> Tupac song, I would say, uh, "You got four bad, four bad boys. Can't raise them on your own." You know what I'm saying? So. You know, it was sticky, man. I grew up on Florence and 10th Ave, man. We moved bro, to... When were you a bad kid? What are you talking about, bro? Like, you came out and was like, yeah, I played football, went to college and all that kind of stuff, which is fine. Like, why are you trying to make it seem like you was gang, 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 gang in them? And you admitted it, your, you admitted yourself that you didn't start gang banging until you was like 21, 22. Like, you was like well out of high school, like into college. What are you talking about? Florence and uh, 2nd Ave, you know what I mean? We've been all through that journey. We lived on Florence and Crenshaw, you know what I'm saying? 3524 West Florence, my address. 7230 10th Avenue, 6714 2nd Avenue. You know what I'm saying? So I've been over there all my life. 74th Street Elementary, High Park. You could live over there your whole life. That don't mean that you was like a ninja over there your whole life, putting in work and doing damage and all that kind of stuff, which is nothing wrong with that. But you was just like, a, as, as the Brown Brothers would say, you was a resident for sure. Uh, horseman, Crenshaw. Because all through that area that he was at, said you claim it and all that kind of stuff, you can't go over there. 600 right now, okay, go live and hit them corners and hit them addresses and show you and then stay there for 45 minutes without nobody going there, without anybody going over there doing something to him. We know this for a fact. This man's just talking. You know what I mean? So, well, I've just been in the area, so like I said, I didn't see them go. But like I said, I, I was pretty much trying to be a good kid, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't out, you know what I'm saying, going to jail, you know what I'm saying, out, you know what I'm saying, doing all the wrong. I was really trying to escape that because I seen what was coming. Like, this ain't it. I was really trying to get out of my mom. You didn't try to escape it, bro. You did escape it. You're a good kid. You're an overall good. Why is that such a bad thing? Like, why do people, like, find weakness in being a good person, bro? You were a good person. Like, there's nothing tough about you. House. <laughs> I'm trying to yeah, get out of here. Yeah, fuck. This ain't it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Everybody I know is going to jail, juvenile hall, YA, going to prison, going to county. I'm like, man, this ain't it. Everybody dying. I'm like, <laughs> I'm not doing that. I got to get some money. <laughs> yeah. I can't stay here no more. At all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ah, so like school was like your way out. So like, cause again, you're like six football, foot six. Football, school and football. Ah, yeah. football. So like, how good was you, right? Cause like, for example, right? Cause like, I knew like, like, so I knew like playing tennis and in high school that that like I wasn't gonna go pro, right? So like, so so like when you was playing football, did you know I'm good enough to go pro or not really? I, I, nah, I, see, I didn't play football to my senior year. Ah, I okay. never played pop Warner. I played flag football Van Ness Park when I was young. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, but. You look like the type of ninja who lived in that area and didn't play for Baldwin Hills, who didn't play for uh for Inglewood, who didn't play for Carson, who didn't play for Compton. You know what I'm saying, bro? You didn't even you didn't even play for South Orange County, bro. You weren't even a part of the Patriots. 
you a real LA OG, you know what I'm saying? You know about South Orange County Patriots. And back when it was the Orange County Junior All-American Football, the Ock-Jaff, before it was Snoop Dogg League, when it was Ock-Jaff, you know about that, bro. I played for the, I played for the Inglewood Jets. Um, I wasn't that great. I ain't even gonna lie. I wasn't. I had to clear up some space in my device, but I put them pads on though. I put them pads on though. I did. I did them Omaha drills. I did them up downs in them drills. I did them uh, them bull rings in them drills and all that kind of stuff. Flag football. You big softy. You been soft your whole life, bro. Let's get back to it. I never played football. I never, we couldn't afford to play pop Warner. And when I went to school, I was just ditching school. I was. Nah. See, this is what we're not gonna do in the city of South Central, Los Angeles, California, South Central, be exact. I know for a fact that them kids can play football for free. If your mama got a conversation or the kid got a conversation or the dad got a conversation or anybody can just see that the kid wants to play and the parents can't afford it, don't make a way for the kids to play football. You was soft, big dog. So we're not going to sit here and be like, oh, I couldn't afford to play. That's not how That's not how Pop Warner Sports work in the city of L.A., bro. Especially in that era. Especially in that area. Era and area. I didn't mix up the words. In that era, in that area, no, bro. You could have got on somebody's team, bro. You was a big softie and you couldn't. It's okay. You was a you was a flag football playing kid. It's, okay. it's nothing wrong with flag football. You was a powder puff football playing guy. So it's okay. You was just big for nothing. On the brink of even dropping out of high school in like tenth grade. That's why I gave my life to the Lord. Like tenth grade. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So shout out Jesus. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> shout out Jesus. Crazy. So you shout out Jesus. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I never really uh, played football like that. So my senior year was my actual time playing football. Yeah, I never played. You know what I mean? I was skinny. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I wasn't working out. Everybody else going to juvenile hall and camp getting swole. I'm puny, skinny. Yeah. But I had a heart, though. You know what I'm saying? So I was trying to play. So, you know, I was just trying to get a scholarship somewhere to get out of L.A. I was trying to make some of myself. I could not go down the process because <laughs> everybody's going to jail, getting shot, and dying. I'm not doing that. The facts, man. You know what I'm saying? Wait, so, like, what? Like, was you like a receiver, a quarterback, a I tight was end? receiver, defensive end. I was okay. just trying to just get on, running back. You know, what I, mean? I was just trying to be on the team. You know what I'm saying? Not facts. I think I started off at running back, honestly. Like you too tough for running back though, right? Like you. Like, I had a growth spurt. No, no. Them, okay. I'm speaking on when I was trying to play football. Yeah, of course. Like ninth grade, tenth grade, yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Course. I never even played football for Crenshaw. Of course, of course. Until my twelfth grade year. So I'm speaking on like well, I would go to camp and football. I was trying yeah. to be a running back. Ah, bad, bad. bad it's bad. like ninth grade. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Tenth grade, we'll do. And then twelfth grade is when I finally actually played on the team. Yeah, right. Here, right, cause like listen, cause like when like when like I used to like like uh and play Madden heavy, right? And they're like used to be to be like this thing called like the franchise mode, right? Yeah. Like we're like we could like pick, right, like the height of our play, blah blah. Yo, listen, I like used to always like make like a six for six running back, right? Cause again, <laughs> cause bro, cause bro, like the cheat code, right? Listen, you're right, right. If you're six six and that fast, bro, and yeah. you can like and, and, and bro, man, man, come on, bro, like you a cheat code, right? Yeah. So, being that size, though, did you ever get, like, a scholarship to college or no? So, when I left high school, I didn't get no offers. Oh, damn. Okay. I wasn't even really playing like that. I wasn't getting over no playing time. Facts, facts. So, but I, in my heart, I knew I can play. I'm yeah. just young. I graduated high school at 17 years old. Oh, wow. I'm already a late bloomer, so I'm young. Now, this is the part of the interview that I can't believe to be true. The football stuff. And I believe that if Officer Love Boys would have continued to go this rate, go this route, we would have had a great individual amongst us. I think that he would have been a great person. I think he would be a pillar of the society. I think he would have been a great man. Somewhere around the lines, he kind of made a shift, and we ain't going with the shift. A late bloomer, puny, no football experience. I'm just here, just... Going through the process, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I think the award, you know, at the end of the season, you get awards from the team. I was awarded the most dedicated player. Because oh, I'm in practice, I'm going crazy, I'm skinny, I'm, you know what I'm, I'm going crazy. But anyway, so I went to Glendale Community College. Okay. I played there. Now, first I went to Southwest College. Mm -hmm. Shout out Coach Washington. I was so puny, he was like, bro, listen, you know, you, you playing with grown men, bro. You know, mm -hmm. you got to gain some weight. Yeah. You trying to play defensive end? I'm like, yeah. He's like, man, you got, you, you dealing with men now, you know what I'm saying? Went through the process. I was got so Glendale was trying to come to the city, get some inner city players. They come to my house and call me like, you know, you went to Crenshaw. We'll do I'm like, yeah, I want to come play. Come on. Mm -hmm. So that's where I ended up going though. Okay. So you know, I did my two years there. I got my associate's degree. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And um, congratulations for that associate's degree. We see you being the man who you really are, not the fake officer love boy that you pretend to be. Respect that. I wasn't really getting a real office like that. Okay. Even then, it was just whatever. I was still undeveloped. I was. Probably like 100 pounds, a lot of that. Yeah, but you got your education, so that matters more than any uh, scholarship office for sure. I am now, you know what I'm saying? Oh, damn. So a few guys who was on my team, they got scholarships to Northwest Oklahoma State. Okay. And that's where that was at. So from there on, I got one scholarship. I went to Humboldt State mm -hmm. from the JUCO. Went up there, played a year up there. 
Okay. They tried moving to tight end. I said, well, I'm, I'm not tight end, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, I play defensive end linebacker. I don't want to do this. I come back. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I'm kind of like in the streets a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Chimping and you know, messing with little stuff. Homie's still going, going to jail down. I'm like, this is kind of ugly. You know what I'm saying? But I'm still in the football mode. I'm still trying to figure it out. Yeah. But I still got eligibility. Okay. So I do a, I do a season, uh, a year at Dominguez, Cal State Dominguez. Okay. So a few people, you know, when you all in the college world, you be figuring out who going to what, what, what. So I go to University of Laverne. Mm -hmm. Bam. It's like a D3 school. They don't even get scholarships. I don't even know. I'm like, I ain't got no busy out here. Come on. I'm like, because now they're graduate assistants now. So now they're recruiting. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm coming out there. Looking at my 40 times for the money. So oh, selling three. drugs. Or what? It was, two, it was two, 2003 when, like, you started, like, dipping and dabbling into, like, some, like, heavy, like, moving pounds and shit, right? So oh, selling three. drugs. Oh, three. If it ain't going to happen, I'm not no fool. I got to get to the money. Oh, I still got a year as a billy. I left. I said, man, I'm cool. Damn, <laughs> and you just quit. <laughs> I left. <laughs> I, I got to the money. And when you say hustling, getting money, like what do you mean? Um, let me look up the statute of limitation or something like that. Uh, <laughs> All right, okay. You feel me? <laughs> right, cuz though, that is a. You feel let me? me right? make so far I be talking. Yeah, you feel me? There is something well, you, you feel know me, that, you know, Listen, you man, ask. when I say hustling, man, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, just getting to it, man, in the streets, man. You know what I'm saying? That's uh, what we was doing. You know what I'm saying? So what? I went to was... I'm going to give you a sample. Yeah. I went to Humboldt State. Okay. That's where I got my feet wet. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You went to Humble State where all the peas are. You met the white boys. You sell the little peas and all that. We're whopping with your family and all that, blah, blah, blah. And then you got excited. Okay, we get it. Okay, got it. We got it. So oh, three. Oh, three. Yes. Oh, three is okay. when I got my feet wet. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. I was getting 9,000 for a pound of that purple. When purple came out, purple weed, mm -hmm. I was getting 9,000 in the city. I was getting it for 1,500, 1,800. God top. damn, bro. That thousand. Damn. Come on, bro. Damn. Come on, man. 500 a zip in the city. That's Ooh. crazy. I know people who was going out the city was, that was, man, listen. Yo, how much money, money though, like, okay, okay. So, okay, so what? It was two, it was two, 2003 when, like, you started, like, dipping and dabbling into, like, some, like, heavy, like, moving pounds and shit, right? I used to bring back, like, 20 pounds. Where? Uh, like, back to L.A.? Yeah. Got you. Um, no license. Slide. So, just so we can make sure we're following this timeline correctly, he was born in 83, 17 years later, 2000 would be the year he graduated, now this is 2003. Uh, let's put him at 20, 21 years old. Damn. Because <laughs> he still hasn't started game banging yet, so, you know, whatever. Damn, wait, all right. Because remember, he just said all through high school he was a good kid and he gave his life to the Lord in the 10th grade, so... When everybody else is going to juvenile hall and all that, it's nothing against nobody because I believe that giving your life to the Lord is much better, much better, much better, much better than going to juvenile hall. But let the record reflect. Shout out to Back on the Fig. Um, when everybody else is going to juvenile hall, you was giving your life to the Lord, big dog. And now all of a sudden you're like the super banged out crib. Like 30 years later, 25 years later, some shit like that. So then at that much time, man, like how much money did you have? At once. That wasn't even my peak. I can get. We're gonna get to that in a minute. Oh, okay. This fact. was just like I was only making like five hundred, maybe a thousand. I'd have had the money, bro. I was just working, just okay. like you know. You get this. I'm gonna make five hundred off each one. You know, what I'm saying sure. I make five bands. You know, what I'm saying every time I come back. You know, what I'm saying five right. off this. That wasn't what we nothing. I'm just always checking, figuring it out. Fact. You want to talk about the the big money? What? No, soon, right? Soon. <laughs> you know, because we... all right, soon. <laughs> but um, uh, at Humboldt State, right? Yeah. So. Bro, I think I was on Clubhouse one night, right? Mm -hmm. And your people hate you on that app, by the way. They hate me. Yeah, they hate you on that app. They love me. They love to hate me. Facts, right? So I love it. Right? Listen, if you mention Christopher, sorry, or 600, yo, you, you got to say, sorry, that's my name. You yeah, run yeah. my name. I ain't never told nobody. Right. See, some people don't like their name because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. all this stuff is public record. <laughs> yeah, and right. these dudes be on sex offender <laughs> lists. They be on sex offender <laughs> lists. They be right. on these people indictments. You finna, but you don't be outside, bro. Like, you're not an outsider. So, like, uh, it's easy to say all that from a couch in no jumper where you have to literally get buzzed in and even though this building exists for you to know that you're there and all that kind of stuff. It's not really like the toughest thing, right? For real, for real. Mm -hmm. They be on people's paperwork mm -hmm. as witnesses, mm -hmm. as victims, yeah. making statements. They don't want that stuff out there. So, That's just public record. The facts, man. <laughs> right? No, but when you say your name, though, yeah. you know, views come with it, right? So, right? So, again, so if, if if I was your enemy, you feel me? Right. 
I would definitely make videos about you, but yeah. But I don't think he has any real enemies. Guess what though? I'm smarter than that to be an enemy, right? Yeah. I would never watch because again, I understand when you beef with six hundred white, there's repercussions. So I don't want to, right? You know I mean? There's literally no repercussion for beef with six hundred. Like here, I am repercussionless. Um, it's literally nothing happens. He stays inside. He avoids you. He gets in the comments, but he doesn't actually pop out. Um, yeah, there's actually no repercussions. Like not even a little bit. Like there's nothing that will happen to you. Like literally, there's no consequence for beef with six hundred. Like none at all. Zero donut. None. None. Skunk. Over with. Like, we play Madden, it's 21 nothing, and end of the first quarter, you got a pass controller. It's like that type of victory. You feel me? Like, there's no consequence, like, at all. Like, not even, like, not even a little bit. Like, there's nothing. I promise. Nothing. Hear me on this. Nothing. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But, though. You don't want to do that. Yeah, facts. But, why on Clubhouse, though? Uh, or didn't have to be any. I did it. Successfully. You're, like, a nobody. Like, I don't, he lives in delusion. I'm, I'm convinced that this guy right here lives in delusion. And maybe that's my fault um, on my end for, uh, you know, taking an issue seriously with somebody who is clearly, like, off on another planet because what the hell. Right? Yeah. I would never watch because, again, I understand when you beef with 600 white, there's repercussions. So I don't want to, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But, though. You don't want to do that. Yeah, facts. But why on Clubhouse, though? Um. They kept bringing up at humble state, humble state, and humble state, right? Um, and they were saying that you was a ticket cop in Humboldt County or Humboldt. Uh -huh. Yeah, some bush like that, right? I ain't so, never, I ain't never is heard that, that true? Hell no, I ain't never heard that. Before. Right, a uh, ticket cop. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. Humble. I don't even see none of this stuff that they say, bro. See, facts, right? Now, uh, and they also said that yo, that yo, uh, and he was a part of the uh, poll, the poll. Police Academy. At some point, they said that too. So mm -hmm. again, is that true? I don't it's not held. I can say, yeah, it's not true. Yeah, but there's nothing wrong with the Police Academy. <laughs> uh? That ain't. That's not a knock. <laughs> nah, bro. Wait. Here, right now. Look. Now, I have heard though of like of gangs and who send people to the academy yeah. to sort of like have somebody and on the inside. So yeah. right, right. So like in that circumstance, then you know, then there's nothing wrong with it, right? But if you're like a gang member who was once a cop, then it's kind of like you can't really do that, right? No, no, you can't be at the same time. Oh, uh, okay, It's gotcha. respectable if you're not in the streets no more. Because let me, let me change them to the world, right? Yeah. The gang bangers know there's no winning, there's no end game to being a gang banger. Yeah. The gang bangers know if you have illegal firearms, if you're in a police law enforcement, you're winning in life. <laughs> Absolutely. The people outside the gang world, yeah. they like to use it to say that it's a bad thing. Facts. Nobody wants to be a gang banger. Facts. Back then and back now, it was never it. It's always been a facade. Why are you outside at 3 o'clock in the morning at 4 o'clock at 40 years old spray painting walls and like gang banging and going live from the hood? Live from the section. Uh, Christopher Lovejoy is going live from the hood. Uh, he's live from the set right now. Dead anchors. Uh, it's, that guy's coming. The guy in the USC. Jersey, that's a little bit too small for him. He's coming. Should have got two sides bigger. Jerseys are hard. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. All the people in the pen right now, they feel like they did for nothing. Yeah, no facts. You know what I'm saying? So facts. it's no actual members saying that. Facts. But I'm not even in it to say it. Yeah, so facts. that was a lie. In yeah, fact, man. Wait, I right, like so like when you hear like these rumors about yourself. Where do you think people is getting this information from? Just making it up or like they're hearing like bad information from they other just, people? They're just making it up. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> I don't have a problem with saying that I was trying to be a police officer. Yeah. If fair. I was trying to be a police officer. <laughs> yeah, fair. I went I was trying to be a fireman. Yeah. I got a hundred on my on my on my physical on my physical test. I got a hundred Oh, it was the fire academy. Yeah. Uh, okay, gotcha. I got, so a, that's I, got, I got a hundred on my written test. I, out of three hundred people, I was the first person to finish my test. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I passed the physical. I got an in-person interview, I got a hundred. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But they put on my background. And I'm Seems like you should have went and been a firefighter, big dog. I'm not gonna lie. That would have been a pretty lucrative career. And you would have been worth something. Nobody ever said fuck the fire department. You fuck with the fire department. That's, I, I didn't go. Ah. Uh, that was it. But uh, it's nothing wrong with that. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, think about it. People say fuck the police all the time, but you ain't never heard nobody say, hey, fuck the fire department. Nobody has a beef with the fire department. We fuck with firefighters. Listen, so, I, I laugh. 
Listen, I laugh at these people. Man, he's a crip cop. Somebody, <laughs> somebody need to be a crip cop to get rid of these busters <laughs> and these rats. You know what I'm saying? But you can't be a crip and a cop at the same. It's not gonna work, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But they be so mad that I don't have no smut. Like I'm telling you, bro, it's so much rats and rat loving yeah. in my neighborhood, bro. They mad that I don't have none of that stuff in my name. So they try to just throw lies to not get me to get to the top. I'm already at the top. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I don't even function over there. I got more money and all that. So they be just mad, bro. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just mad. Look, so then one I'm not of mad at them for being mad because a lot of people really shed blood, sweat, and tears, you know what I'm saying, for yeah. the neighborhood mm -hmm. with no benefits and wish they never did it. Mm -hmm. That's just the facts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So some of them just refuse to let it go. But a lot of them is like, he's doing the right thing. I wish I could be where he's at. Of course. I've been to 14 countries, bro. Said nobody ever, nobody ever looked at Christopher Love Boy's uh, demonstration in the streets and said, yeah, I want to be like you. No, nobody said that. You know, yeah. I don't got no bullet holes. I ain't got no felonies. Yeah, bro, listen, bro, like, I feel like the streets come with nothing but regrets, right? So, like, I don't feel like anybody feels like being stuck in the streets is, is a W in life, right? I feel like everybody want to, you know, like, ascend past that at some point. Listen, it's, it, it just is what it is when you don't know nothing else. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It is what it is. You grow up in it. You know what I'm saying? Your best friend get killed by this gang. You want to feel good about this. You literally just said that that wasn't your life. Like, you literally just said that that wasn't your life. By that point in time, you had given your life to God. So I'm not really sure what the relevance is in that because you started off by letting us all know that that was not your life. So I'm not sure. Life is hard. Don't worry about it, dog. By, by doing this to that game, before you know it, you're all the way into it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But this is how you grow up. If your daddy's from it, if your best friend's from it, you going to school around it. These dudes got the girls. They got some money. Yeah. They know how to fight. You want you don't want to feel like you're getting beat up. You want to feel like you got protection. So that's just how it be, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's just it just it's just it's just it. It's what it is. But when you realize it, that's when you messed up. Because mm -hmm. now you done got bullet holes. You're in the penitentiary. You are probably dead. Your whole face is tatted. You, all your colleagues and friends you met are druggies. All they got is jail stories, you yeah. know what I'm saying, legal stuff. Yeah, of course. See, they don't have no real connections. Mm -hmm. That's why it's bad. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Look, man, so one of, like, the biggest things that I've seen people sort of, like, try to, like, attach their name, right? And, uh, again, we're just going to address in everything yeah. because, again, I want this to be, like, the one interview where they say, yo, he talk about this hair if him go here for it, right? <laughs> yeah. So address and all the lies, you know, and like all the truth, right? Yeah. So one of the biggest things they say is, yo, what day did Christopher or 600, like what day did, did like, you know, um, so what day did you get put on? What day? Yeah, or a year. Well, let's put it like this, man. I was born in it, not sworn in it. Mm. And when no. No, 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 no. Because you would have led with that in the beginning when you was talking about your family history, big dog. That is not the case. That's not the situation. That's not the case. No. You will not do that, little boys. You will not do that. No. You will not. No. You're lying. You are a fabricator. You are lying. You in it like that. You gotta come get some officials at some point. Yeah, to be like that, and that's just how it go. Yeah, I was. I'm gonna just say. I'm gonna just say 2003. Mm, you know what I'm saying? But I, I'm 2003. Okay, let's 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 do some math here. Let's do some math here. 2003. All right, give me one second. Where's my? Cause I just want to make sure that I'm. Cause I'm sometimes my math be off. Is thinking it's hard. He was born in 1980. Twenty years. I just want to make sure that I was right because that's twenty years. That was twenty years. Okay, got it. That's twenty years old when you started gaming. Got you. You know, documented and all that stuff and yeah. pictures and actual events. Keep in mind, in tenth grade, he had given his life to Christ. So, just nineteen ninety-eight, he gave his life to Christ, and then I guess like something happened in two thousand and twenty-three, where he's like, "Yeah, I sell weed now. I went to humble state." Gangsta, I went to Humble State and I got with the little hippies up there and now I'm selling tree and now I'm gonna go get put on because yeah, tough, play flag football. Mm -hmm. That's right. That can't be erased yeah. way before that, you know. Yeah. 
That's just how I would say that. Bet I. Ah, so in 2003, then, then you would have, would have been 18 years old. And they try to say that you got put on at 22. No. He wouldn't be 18 in 2023. He was born in 1983. Christopher Lovejoy was born in 1983. Hold on, bro. That's, that's not. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Boom. Boom. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Boom. Yeah, he's 40 years old, big dog. Yeah. Yeah. That wouldn't make him... <laughs> 2003 then and look how he just agrees to the lie you niggas is wild bro you niggas are fucking wild bro you niggas are wild then you would have would have listened to yeah. pictures and actual events that can't be erased yeah. way before that you know what I'm saying? Yeah. that's just how we say that bet ah so in 2003 then then you would have would have been 18 years old and they try to okay. say that so look let's, let's count do this together because counting is hard. 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93. That's 10. Let's do it with two hands because sometimes numbers are hard, Flacco. So let's, let's do this together. 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93. That's 10. That's that's 10 little piggies. I went to the market, Flacco. So remember, we're going to put that 10 to the side. So that, that, I'm going to set that over there, Flacco, because I know math could be hard for you and your daddy over there. You feel me? You have a mouthful of meat right now, and it's messing up your inability to count. And I know you can count, Flacco, because you get chili, so I know you can count. So just take the meat out your mouth real quick, Jason. Don't worry about it. Um, boom. So that's that. Um, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000. We did 10 twice or five, four times or one, 20 times or two, 10 times. However you need it to make sense in your head, you need it to resonate. It's 20, big dog. It's not 18. Numbers are hard. Don't worry about it. Hey, you got put on it at 22. <laughs> Bro, they've come up with so many stories. <laughs> you know what the first? See, now I do believe that it's 22 because he said that, number one. That was Christopher Lovejoy. And he just agreed to Flacco that it was 18 when we just can clearly see that it's 20 so it's like a lot of like inconsistencies here we're gonna go with the fact that he actually said it happened at 22 though his words not ours I think they said they said man yeah. he got put on on Chris Shaw about some little kids <laughs> <laughs> then they say he never got put on now they got something new yeah he got put on at 22 I tell them I got put on at 32 because mm -hmm. I don't care what they think yeah and the people who saying that never even got put on <laughs> like who the people who saying it, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm I don't even get these dudes no shine. Uh, yeah, you no notice fun. everything I do is all about me. If you want to talk about people, that's cool for you. As far as me, when I'm on my show, I don't even respond to these dudes. They got to make 60 videos to get me to say their name. Yeah, facts. You, you know what I'm saying? So. Hey, right, listen, right? Because we're not going to say at his name. But yeah, we found out that he, like, he was trying to claim that at some point. Oh, yeah, little Buster. Yeah, yeah. yeah buster. <laughs> you feel me, right? You feel me? But, 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 uh, you know, and he was never cut out for it, man. But, but, uh, past that nigga, though, man. Um, all right, so then who put you on there? See, I'll be. Like, we the can't, name. Yeah. We, well, we, well, we, we can't really talk is, about. Yeah. Stuff is. Like that because that's like putting somebody. You know, the gang is illegal, right? Nah, bro. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. Because you've made so many arguments where you're implicating, implement, implicating yourself, implementing other people. All kind of stuff. And you out your own mouth said, it's not illegal to be in a gang. It's not illegal. That's not illegal. You've said that to your own defense. Now you are using that to avoid saying who put you on because you are an imposter there on that I stay. It's not the truth, big dog. You're telling a lie. You're a liar, man. You're a liar, man. You lie to the public. You lie to flacco. You sit on the couch and you just lie. You lie like the fourth. You lie like after June and right before August. You lie. You lie, you lie, you lie. You a liar. You a liar, big dog. You a liar. Like a hamburger and a hot dog. You a liar. You a liar. It's a Fourth of July joke. The hamburger and a hot dog. Don't worry about it. Fucking dirty liar, bro. No. That's true. They're all so like Yankee judges. Saying, ah, okay. Yeah. So I got a win situation, right? When I go to jail, mm -hmm. I, they ain't got to identify me with no. You've never been to jail. Hey, I'm going to any dorm I want. That's okay. The members in there are gonna know where I'm from, but you ain't got to say I'm from '60s. Yeah, put me only with the neighborhoods. Now put me anywhere, bro. We're gonna figure it out. That's 
So it ain't none of that. If you're a cop, you don't go to jail. What are you talking about? Gang foul. None of that. I'm going with wherever I land. That's you're a cop, bro. You don't go to jail. And then you claim already to be a good kid. What the hell are we even talking about here, bro? Like, how do we get here? How did we get here? 600, you ain't supposed to be here, bro. You ain't supposed to be here. I'm going to be at it. We're going to figure it out. Best. Yo, so like, here, like, in, if they get, okay, for here, here, right, for example, if people know that there are like gang injunctions, why do you feel, feel like, like, like people feel so. Shout out to Flacco for asking the right questions, though. That's what I will say. And I will congratulate Flacco and I will. <laughs> Round of applause for Flacco for asking the right questions. He can't make a man answer questions, but I can respect Flacco for answering the questions. Really talking about. Like where they're from, how they got put on, who put them on, and on well, the internet. Well, you can talk about it all you want, you know. Yeah. what I'm saying? I just found out about this stuff being illegal, I, like oh, wow. last year. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it play out how it play out, man. You know what I'm saying? Everybody know where we from, how Fair. we grew up. They no, you're not, bro. I was just over there with them niggas, and they don't claim you, bro. <laughs> like they don't claim you, bro. Like they not. This nigga is a wild boy. Call him Steve O. He is a wild boy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it play out how it play out, man. You know what I'm saying? Everybody know where we from, how we grew up, things we did and all that. And I don't be having nothing to prove to these people who be on the internet. You know what I'm saying? Best. My streets, my homies, my people, my history is, is good. Best. My record is impeccable. You know what I'm saying? So Best. I don't be really be tripping on that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because the people who matter know the truth. The, the people who don't matter, like that man, he's a police man. <laughs> he got sealed files. He's a snitch. Yeah. Bro, I ain't never told on nobody, bro. I ain't got no co-defendants. I ain't even got no felonies. I Still never really did unseal those files. You kind of came with a flu flam, but don't worry about it. Flu flams are hard. I never took the stand. I ain't made no statements. Yeah. Ain't nobody in jail because of me. And nigga, we done been out here, nigga, in the field, nigga. Yeah. If niggas was in jail, nigga, if I was a snitch, everybody. You don't be in the field. I was in the field. You wasn't there, big dog. You weren't. You were like literally. You weren't there. You were not. I know, I know being jail. Best. You're not God. You're not omnipresent. Like, you don't have an omnipresence. What are you talking about? Ha have anyone ever had that same energy for you in person that they had for you online? He don't come outside. We'll never know. He don't come outside. He don't be there. Well, we got to come outside for us to know that. Nah. Nah. Damn. I'm a different type of animal, bro. Like, I'm really, really from where I'm from. Like, I've really been out there in the field. Like, yeah. I really have a real name in the streets. Yeah. Go back and look through my lives. Got a couple of different lives of a couple of different times where he's like not there. He, if he's a different type of animal, that's because he means like he's like a teacup Yorkie. So we respect that that you are different kind. Like you look, <laughs> like you get it. You're a teacup Yorkie. I get it. You you are a different type of animal. You feel me? I'm out there with the lions and the gorillas, and you in our house with the teacup Yorkies and a, and a little teacup poodle. I respect you a teacup Yorkie. I respect that. You are a different type of animal. I get it. You a this is why awesome. you a pig. You a rat. You a teacup Yorkie. I get it. You're a poodle. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna call you a bitch. I'm gonna call you a poodle. You feel me? Female dog. Poodle. Teacup poodle. Teacup dog. Different type of animal. You going, you fit in a purse. I get it. We easy to come to the internet. But a lot of these dudes, you you're a gift for a baby mama. I get it. You're a gift for a 16 year old little girl. Drive the little C class bench. I get you. See, I've seen them in person mm -hmm. and they bowed it down off but, top. Like who? <laughs> I mean, it ain't, it ain't too many people that who ain't who ain't seen me in person, bro. I really be outside, and I really was really outside in the field before this internet thing. I right, look, you know what I'm saying? Look, have you seen uh, a Spotted Oak in person? Yeah, I saw Spotted Oak in person. And was there any type of like conflict? No, nah, cause I, I ain't person? seen her since we've been beefing. Ah, all right, all right, all right, all right. Nah, we were straight. You know what I'm saying? We we did an interview before. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He knows people mutually. I know. You know, we actually had dinner together with some a business meeting that we had before, but this is all before okay. the conflict started. All right, and we'll definitely get to that soon, right? Yeah. But how did you like meet Crip Mac? Because I feel like that was the first time that I got like tapped into you was was when you I guess start managing Crip Mac or that's was when it? I, that's when I really first hit the internet crazy. Okay, gotcha. He's just a viral dude. Okay. So Crip Mac did a deal with CME, which some people I know. Okay. Uh. The chain right global. Oh, yeah, I forgot I got my chain on, my bad. You know? And um, they was like, man, what you doing? We got a job for you. I'm like, I ain't doing that. What's up? Mm -hmm. We we manage Crip Mac. We just signed him. We got him some money. He's straight. And we you know we out here on the East Coast. And, you know, mm -hmm. we need you running around with him. Say no more. Where he at? Okay. Let's do it. So okay. I was the 
acting manager, but I was never on his contract, and he knows this. Okay. So uh, anyway, they did the deal. Now I'm managing him. Okay. Now, well, like, what type of deal was it? Because I feel like a lot of people are confused because there's a lot of like misinformation going out there. It was an entertainment deal. Okay. Based on social media and music, it was really covered everything, bro. All the music, social media, you know. Parents. So basically, y'all just want y'all signed Crip Mac and basically took his entire life. You guys was like, hey, Crip Mac, your soul. Let me get that big dog. Let me get that. Go ahead and give me that soul, big dog. This is concerts, you know. what I'm saying cameos, everything, you know. And this included his like YouTube channel. Yeah, everything. Yes, all social media. Yeah, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, everything. All uh, right. Now, like, is there like a number that they gave in upfront? Cause listen, yeah, he got, yeah. right. Cause there's rumors that he got paid ten thousand for a three sixty and all his shit. No, no, no. He got ten thousand. He got that up front. Okay, ten thousand was he up front. Signed anything. Okay. Then he got. So let's just say this is what he did, right? So when we first got his channel, his channel was making I think seven or eight thousand dollars a month. Yeah. As soon as we got him, we got to twenty thousand a month. Okay. So we're gonna just deal with that first before getting else. So let's just say out of the twenty, not not not, not less, not less. Just say, <laughs> let's say out of the twenty, yeah. he get his ten, or whatever his percentage is, mm -hmm. and the label gets their percentage, right? Yeah. So not only he got his percentage, mm -hmm. he kept the whole percentage. We gave him the whole percentage and didn't make anything, mm -hmm. right? So he got his percentage plus the company's percentage. Okay. On top of that, he got probably more than double that in advances. Mm. Spent all of that. So he spent what he made, mm -hmm. he spent the company's percentage, and he spent all of the advances, which was more than all that, and it's always all documented, right? Mm -hmm. And was mad at the label because he don't have no money when he spent all the money and some. So, well, I was making this much a month. So, mind you, it's done professionally. Everything is documented. Never okay. gave him no cash. Everything is documented. Everything, how it was sent, why it was sent, how much was sent, to who, and what, where. I had a I had an hour conversation with him, the label, mm -hmm. and someone that he knows who he always be saying their name, right? Oh, them slip? No. Okay. So and we had to read off every payment we made to him. Yeah. To add up to everything I just told you. Wow. And they stopped on the phone like, damn, you have that money? <laughs> so you spend sixty thousand, sixty, seventy thousand dollars in sixty days. Really? Wow. And mad at them, mad at the label, and mad at me for being with the label. And telling everybody wow. that I'm keeping your money. Wow. So next month when YouTube come, the YouTube check come, mm -hmm. where do you think the money gonna go? We still give him some more money for his pocket, yeah. but how are we gonna recoup the money that we put up? We done put up now we in we we, we in a negative forty thousand. Ah. Uh. Well, that is normal uh, business from any type of record deal, record label. So, but six hundred does that saying does actually make sense. I can see that going on that business side, but I think again, six hundred should stay on this side of the things, you know, business and all that kind of stuff, rather than trying to play like this whole tough guy role because nobody believes that it's the business side that we could kind of. Well, at this point, I don't think anybody will get behind you, but what we could have gotten behind, but the whole like tough guy, like oh, I'm super banged out. Don't quite see that big dog. Oh. Because what he's saying on the business aspect does make 100% sense right now. He spends the money. We're mm. mad at us. Mm. Sorry, Clear Mac. Wait, right? So then after, let's say, so after y'all gave him, you know, like the 40 to 60, right? Right. Um, the following month now, like that's when y'all said, okay, like we're going to do splits. Like you take 50 and we take 50. Now, so he was getting his half of the ad revenue. Yeah. Yeah. And... I uh, okay. So then, exactly where like where did things go wrong? Well, he got twenty people around him who don't have any money, and they're leeching off of him. Yeah. So before we came into the picture, they were able to leech off of him. Mm -hmm. Now we're in the picture; they can't leech off of him. So now they're mad, and they're blaming us that he don't got no money. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So all these people getting his ear, they didn't went to jail. We had a big fight for him for a hundred thousand dollars. That was when I came into it. That that was when that was when we tapped in. Yeah. Had a fight for him for a hundred thousand dollars of blue face. Mm-hmm. Went to jail. Alright. Now, him being your client, did you feel like that was like the best thing for him to put him in a fight with a a dude a dude a dude like Blueface who's like a professional killer? Like who's right like right like like here, for example, right? 
like saying yo, hey, Crim Mac, like go ahead and fight Blueface is like saying like yo, like hey, like here's a hundred thousand to go ahead and lose, right? Like you feel me? Well, it's not about going to go lose, you know what I'm saying? Crim Mac got heart, and it was just gonna be entertainment, you know. If, but Blueface is not like a Mike Tyson. He wasn't gonna kill. Him. He wasn't gonna be injured. If he if he lose the fight, just lose the fight, just boxing. You know what I'm saying? But he was willing to do it. You know what I mean? So it wasn't like it was he was gonna be in a situation to where he was gonna be have injuries and you know trauma. Nah, no, that would have caused some injury and trauma, right? Like you, like I mean, Crim Blueface probably whooped the shit out of Crim Mac. Shit out of Mac. Mac a big dude, man. Right. But Blue and Fish I was have been like training. boxing for, for like two years. Before that, no, this was this a couple years ago. Ah, okay, yeah, got this, you. Yeah, this, this is from 2022. Ah, bad, 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 bad. You know what I'm saying? He only had a couple under his belt. Okay, got you, got you, got you. But we was going to train him and get him right. You know what I'm saying? That was so, that, that was when we tapped. We saw you guys training. It was trash. Then that was perfect time. I said, no, I'm going to train him. Yeah. That's yeah, how yeah. it happened. I reached out to them. Yeah. And say, so I want to train him because he's a heavyweight. I'm a heavyweight. I can get in there and react. I train him, get in the ring with him, and show him how to go A to Z because I told myself that. Facts. I didn't have no boxing experience. You know what I'm saying? Facts. When I left the streets, I was done with the streets and I wanted to be, just go do something. So I just said, I'm going to be a boxer. Facts. So I was able to show him that, you know what I mean? Okay. As a heavyweight. So, but that's when I really, really hit the internet. Okay. Cigar, you know what I'm saying? They think I'm yeah. robbing them. They say I kind of favor Shug Knight a little bit. They yeah. say I'm robbing them. Hey. You know what I mean? Because that was the conversation being had, though, was, yo, this new guy who, like, we never heard of, <laughs> yo, right, right, like, right, like, you know, like, he's big, he's imposing, like, <laughs> and he's mysterious, we don't know, like, how to read him, like, we think that he's some type of, right, like, right, right like, big, like, business guru who's just, like, a shark and taking all his money, right? Yeah. So, like, we pretty much thought, again, now, now, again, I'll be real, before I moved to L.A., you feel me, yeah. right, when I'm just an outsider hearing all of this, I kind of look at you like, damn, bro, like, he out here, like, you feel me, right, <laughs> right, like, you know, you know, like, taking it all, you feel me, but now I hear the story, is, it feels like Crip Matt sort of, like, got a lot of money too fast that he could handle, Yeah. and there were a lot of people who were, you know, around him who, who, who sort of had that hand out and took it, right? Yeah. All right, so now, speak on, though, like, the channel, so he gave y'all the password to the channel, and he signed it over. That's just how it worked. That was the conditions of all this upfront money and all this stuff. We're gonna run a social media. That's how I go. You know what I mean? Okay, and because they knew on the back end they would make way more from his social media than they would ever have to give him because that social media check is continuously generating revenue. Even now that Crip Mac is locked up, that social media check is still coming in. Was the signing over in like? It's not foul because Crip Mac had all opportunity to read the contract before he read it. So it just it is what it is. You should have signed better paperwork or should have read better paperwork, however you want to look at it. But nobody put a gun in that man's hand and made him uh, sign that. So that's just 600 doing business at that point. Perpetuity or until he recouped the 60000 I don't know what perpetuity mean, but it was like, it, like, 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 the, like was, the, that means that you're fucked forever, Crip Mac. He don't even know what the word means. Words are hard. Don't worry about it. Indefinite ending. You know what I'm saying? It yes. That's what it was. Wait, 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 wait. An indefinite ending meaning that you're, you're fucked, Crip Mac. So he signed it over completely <laughs> indefinitely? Yeah. yeah. Why? For the front money, man. Nah, come on, bro. Like, but What's up, Bobby? Can I have one of my taxi dusters? Yeah, you got one. <laughs> wait. Did your brother I mean, eat all those ships? Your brother ate all the ships? Yeah. Of course he did. I'm about to make y'all dinner after this video. Love you. And who's advising him to do this, man? Let me explain something to you. I'm not on the contract. Yeah. And I wasn't there when they had the introduction and whatever they had going on. I came in after. Yeah. They was inked up. Yeah. To be the manager. You know. If what I'm, I'm making 10k a month or 7k a month, I'm not signing my shit over like. Well, you get unlimited. You, you basically get unlimited advances. You know what I'm saying? The dude was the dude got like another fifty thousand. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Damn. Just off of that. And we was going to go up. We was going to continue to do it. You know Damn. what I'm saying? Because uh, we knew yeah. we'd make it back. And we was going to boost everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We was going to boost everything. Damn. We was going to put the machine behind it. You know what I'm saying? All right. So now when he went to jail, um, when he went to jail, though, like, was him and y'all already on, like, bad terms and shit? Me and him was always cool. No, well, was, yeah, him and them. Well, they always had the issues, bro. Yeah, you know okay. what I'm saying. They always had the issue because you know he he'd be saying one thing, and you know they putting it to him black and white. He got people in his ear saying something else, yeah. and he listened to people he loyal to. Yeah, 
they mad because they can't bleed him for the money no more. Yeah. So they talking bad about who he signed to. Mm-hmm. It's all type of po- political things going on with who he signed to and me and all that. Yeah. And, you know, it was just a lot going on, bro. And they were just in his ear. You know what I mean? And uh, I, I, like he, he let them people take him down, man. You know what I'm saying? When he with me, he ain't got to worry about nothing. Okay. I already told him, you signed to me, you ain't got no problem. You got problems, you let me know. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm going to take care of it. Right. You ain't catching no cases. You don't need no gun. This is before I got my gun license. You know what I'm saying? I'm out with him toting. Wherever we go, I got the gun. Yeah. He want to have his own thing. You ain't bringing no gun with me. You ain't doing nothing. You ain't catching no case with me. You're going to be straight. Right. I'm going to die for you if you're in my car. Yeah. It ain't going to happen like that. He get with these square dudes, you know what I'm saying? He carrying a gun, got got two gun cases with the, with these clowns. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, well, hey, listen. I'm not calling y'all clown, clowns, right? I said, yeah, because I was trying to talk about like the actual gun case, right? I'm saying clowns yeah, because yeah, yeah, you yeah, got yeah. a nigga who possibly could be a millionaire, bro. Facts. You know what I'm saying? And a nigga got two gun cases. Now he about to get... A lot of time, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You fucked up the bag. I didn't fuck the bag. Hey, I'm right, gonna protect he got, the bag. Hey, right. So when he got like pulled over with a bunch of people, what was they supposed to do when they found a the gun? Well, I don't know. I don't even know. I don't even know the details of it, bro. You okay. know what I'm saying? He wasn't ever supposed to have no gun. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I don't expect nobody to take no case for nobody, but I don't okay. even know who what happened. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Right. They kept that away from me. You know what I'm saying? He didn't want people to even know that he even got went to jail this last time. You know? What really. What I'm yeah, he was mad. People talking about, man, you gonna get my PO? Bro, how somebody on YouTube gonna get your PO to get 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 you violated? They know you went to jail. It's public record. <laughs> the first thing they did was contact probation <laughs> to violate whatever they gonna do. Uh, in fact, you yeah, know yeah. what I'm saying? So he like, man, why y'all saying online, bro? Listen, who, who, what's what's wrong with you? Yeah, you know what I mean. Now, when he got out of jail, like the first yeah. time, uh, now is it true though that you sent like uh like like a legal notice to China Mac and No Jumper to like, yeah. hey, Cease before y'all do content, y'all got to tap in. Cease and desist. All right, so what happened? We sent a cease and desist letters out. Why? You know, because they're doing business with him and he's in the contract. All that stuff is covered in the contract. Mm. You know, and they were ignoring the, his active contract. I bet. Um, and that was, I think No Jumper doing like a series with him. They right. did a lot of business with him. You know, there's a lot of business with him. All yeah. that stuff was covered. It was a f- all the way inclusive, whatever you want to call it. I don't know details, but it was covered every type of what? thing with Ooh. him. You know what I'm saying? You're locked in, you feel me? You're locked in for real. I bet. So then when you sent over like the, you know, like the, uh, like the C-City system mm-hmm. to No Jumper and China Mac, how did they react to it? Um, Adam replied back, and uh, I don't think we got a reply back from China Mac. All right. And I think they was going to keep doing it. Oh, okay. But then, if Crip Mac hadn't had got hadn't had like went to jail and fell out with like China Mac, yeah, how would y'all have proceeded with making sure that well, that stopped? Well, the cease and desist is kind of like a warning okay. to let them know. That's just the, the steps you have to go through before you form a lawsuit. Yeah. You have to show, you know, cease and desist. You got to show. Um, I forgot. It was, it's like three steps you got to do it, man. I did it before when I had to serve somebody. You got to serve them. Proof, yeah. You got proof of service, cease and desist, warning, da 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 show this, that, and the other. And then you have to have all that stuff to present a lawsuit. Uh, okay. You can't just go form a lawsuit. They're going to say, why? Well, did you do this? Did you send a cease and desist? Did you send this? Uh, it's, it's, it's like five different things you got to send off Defense. in the way you got to do it. And they were just following the steps to do it. But by the time all that stuff happened, dude went to jail. Mm. And, uh, okay, here, right? So when so when the paperwork came like to no jumper now, Adam is known to being stubborn. Mm-hmm. So how did Adam respond to that? Um, I don't think we care. See, much about no, it's three hundred thousand. Damn, see, yeah, I was the plan. They still have it. I can get access to it if I want to it. You know, yeah, to be able to be. You want to keep it organic for him. You know, yeah. he don't follow me. Yeah, he's on it again. But like I say, once he get out, he just let people get in his. You know what I'm saying? If there's so many guys into it. Now, if he does five to. I was all the way in the hood. All the you bringing them up because of our history is how she. Off to me, it's like that's like is. I think things would be a little different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know what I'm five. I think he because he's been going like a year already, right? Yeah. So one down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but five to me is like that's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, like. But then I mean, like I say, you bringing them up because of our history is how she helping his name. I, right. I've noticed a lot of people don't really talk about him no more, man. 
Yeah. Man, the, you know what I'm saying? That's right. You know what we talk yeah, about man. no more. Man, so um so you got put on at 18. So what did you meet Big U? I met Big U. All right, we're going to get up out of here. We got another video coming, man. We're going to go ahead and get this one into the field for the rotation for y'all, man. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe for more of the good content. We got going on here at TNN, Trap News Network, some news you can use. Not legit, though. You can't get in. Nobody's kind of legit, though, big dog. Like, comment, subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe for more of this content. We got going on here at TNN, Trap News Network. Red dot, slide it to the left to get some more of this good content. We give it away here at TNN, Trap News Network. And y'all know the rest, man. It's free Avenue Angel until he's free. We go.